howdy everyone this is Trisha and welcome to my channel today I'm going to show you how to make this festive floral crown this will be perfect for Cinco de Mayo celebrations or for really for any other celebration where you feel you need to wear a crown of flowers all right so let's talk about the supplies that we're going to be needing for our floral crown I've got some flowers here as you can see you can use any flowers that you like uh, these are kind of big, but I decided that I wanted something really big, kind of like a Frida Kahlo style of uh, crown. So I'm going to go ahead and use these roses, and I thought these little tiny little, I think they're little, maybe little daisies, uh, would go great. They mix really well with the red roses. And here I've also got some ribbon. I happen to have this red, uh, it's a sheer ribbon. I would have preferred to have a solid one, but this is what I have, so I'm gonna go ahead and work with that. And then I also have this yellow sheer, which is very similar style to the red. So I thought those would be great. I'm also going to be needing some wire, any floral wire, and floral tape. I'm gonna use this green one because I do have green leaves on here. Okay, so my tools are going to be, I may be using my glue gun just in case any flowers come undone and they keep popping off, I can glue them back. I've got these little pliers to help me twist the wire when I close it all up. I've also got my wire cutters to cut stems and scissors to cut ribbon. So those are my tools, so let's get to crafting. Alright, so before we get to doing our crown, we need to measure our head or the head of the person that you're going to be making this for. I have about 21 and a half, so I'm going to go with 22 inches. All right, now that I know that I need about 22 inches to go around my head, I'm going to go ahead and give it an extra, I think, three inches. So I'm going to cut 25 inches. Uh, the reason that I want the extra three inches is to, when I get the two ends together, I'll have the uh, three inches to then wrap on the opposite end so that then this can be a circle rather than just being open. Okay, so I'm going to measure out 25 inches and then cut out my wire with my wire cutters. Here's 25 inches. Okay, so here's my wire all cut up. Let's go to the next step. Alright, so now I'm cutting uh, these red roses from the bush and I'm cutting and leaving about maybe two and a half to three inches of stem on them. Just a little piece right there. And I think I'm going to cut about five of these. So that's four. One more. I'm also, uh, the leaves that are on here. I'm also pushing one set upward. Some of these stems have two, but I'm only pushing one up behind the flower, like that. Okay, so now I have five flowers. Maybe I don't use them all, maybe I will. We'll see. Okay, so then now we need to cut from the other bush. Okay, so what I've done is I've actually placed this wire on the table here. I don't know if you saw this before I started putting the red roses down. I'm going to put them in. I'm just going to crisscross them a little bit, just a tiny bit. Let's see. Let's do this again because it didn't stay. There we go. Just crisscross them a little bit to form a circle with it. Okay, then you can put it on your table or, you know, wherever you're working on your surface. And then place your flowers in a position to kind of give yourself an idea of where you're going to be placing them. Let's say you don't want any big flowers in the front. Maybe you would rather have them to the side. You can choose something like that. I could choose maybe two big flowers on each side or three big flowers on each side and I'm kind of liking that idea. So maybe I'll cut one more from this larger bush. And there we go. We'll put those there. I still have another two flowers that I could add if I decide to do so, or I could take some out. All right, so we were going to go to the next bush, which is this one. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to start cutting these off, off the bush, the stems. Okay, just cutting them like that. Cut them at their longest point for now. Okay, so now that I've cut up all these stems from the bush, and these are now just single stems, uh, I'm going to be looking at them and deciding how much I need to fill in between the flowers and because these are kind of long and these leaves won't slide up and neither will this because they're all in little pieces here what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut right above 
of flour like so and then just leave a little stem on it like that. Now I don't know if I'm going to use this little leaf or not so for now I'm just going to leave them like that but I could always cut right there at the joint where it goes off to become the leaf cut right above that so that then I can have, let me go and do that right now so that then I can have this little stem with a leaf and this little stem with a flower so you can cut a bunch of these once you decide okay this is what I'm going to need to fill in in between so for example I'll do the same to this other piece so cut right above where this leaf is so now I have a little stem and I have this as a stem as well and just go placing them as you go for now this one doesn't have another flower stem down here so I'm just going to cut that off and make two stems right here and I can decide that I want I want just the little flowers in there. Maybe I don't need the leaves in here because you know right over here it's getting kind of tight. So I'm just going to do that. I'm going to cut and then decide where I want my flowers. And of course I'm going to want some more back here, like I do up here in the front. So I'm going to cut some pieces for here, of course somewhere in between these. And I'll be back once I have them all cut, and I'll show you what little design I decided to do. Alright, so I have cut up the flowers that I believe are going to fill up my crown here and I've put them in a certain pattern that I like. I put a leaf, daisy, leaf, daisy, leaf, daisy, leaf. And then I started with a rose, daisy, rose, daisy, rose. And then I've got leaf and then daisies on each of these sides. And then I'm going to leave this part right here blank because this is where I'm going to actually put my ribbons that are going to hang off. They're going to hang off at the back of my head or you know whomever decides to wear this will have ribbons at the back of their head you could choose to put ribbons hanging off the sides that would be really cute you can also uh, make little uh, loop loopy bows and put them here and there but I think that would be uh, very very full already with these large roses so I'm just gonna put ribbon in the back so I'm gonna keep my little pattern and I'm just gonna open it up like that push them aside take my wire and open it up now I gotta keep in mind that three inches of this I need to leave uh, blank because there's not there's not going to be um, anything there because this is where the wires are going to cross and this is where I'm going to put my ribbon also these last little uh, daisy and little uh, leaf stems that I made will go somewhere back here so I don't want to put them on yet they're gonna wait what I am going to do is I'm going to find the center. So this is my middle. So I'm just going to make a little fold right there for now. And then I'm just going to open the rest of it. So I know that this is the very, very center where I wanted this, this one stem to be right around here. Now I'm looking at these and they're kind of big. So I think I may just add a smaller bit of the stem and wire it down. See how much they stick out? I think I'm going to go ahead and go for it because the roses are kind of big. Okay, we're going to do that. We're going to take our floral tape and you can cut little pieces. You know, get them ready. Just like that. Get a bunch of them ready. So you can just grab them and start wire, you know, wrapping things up as you place it on your crown here, your crown wire. So I'm going to place this little stem on here. And I'm going to start taping it. And when you're using floral tape, you got to pull on it a little bit to release that adhesive on it. And that's what makes it stick. Because if you try just wrapping it around, it's not going to stick. You have to pull on it. And sometimes you pull on it a little too hard and it breaks. That's okay. Stick it back down. And press it down with your fingers. That also helps. And there we go. Just like that. We're going to add our first little piece right in the middle. So then from here, we can build our way this way. So the next thing was going to be a leaf. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and put this leaf on here. And I have this tape on here. So I want to overlap this on top of there to cover that tape. And I'm just going to fold it up just a little bit, or bend it, I should say. And place it against the other one on top of the tape that's already existing. And then wrap that one down. So each time you put something, overlap it onto the previous one, on the stem of it. So whatever I'm doing on this side, this side of the crown, because I'm building it this way, I'm going to do it on this side as well. 
Okay, the next one would be a little daisy stem. Okay, so I've put this on here so far and I'm just taking a look at it and I'm thinking these leaves look kind of big on there, but I'm not going to worry about it right now. I'm going to wait till I've actually added the roses because the roses are pretty big. So the leaves kind of balance off uh, that. And not only that, I do have extras here so that, that I can use and I'm thinking that I could take some of the, just the little flowers by themselves. And anywhere where I see like a little spot, maybe that's going to show, I can hot glue. Like maybe I can even hot glue like between these little leaves just to add another little flower there. Let me, let me grab this other one just to, obviously these are not glued on right now, but I'm just resting them on there just to, you know, fill it up a little bit more. So that's something that I might consider. Okay, so I left off. here where um, the center and then there was a leaf a little daisy this one goes over here a little daisy and then a leaf so from this center this way I've got a leaf a daisy and a little leaf so what I can start doing is I can go ahead and start adding these so again I want the leaf I'm going to bend it upward a little bit okay start on this side now on this side I'm not going to have I'm not going to be overlapping it because there's nothing coming this way. There's no stem. So this will be the, the first one on there that I'll tape. And then I'll start overlapping that little flower on top of this stem. Okay, so let's say we didn't have this pattern that I'm doing because I'm doing uh, where I'm, I'm have, having... Uh, a daisy kind of in the middle up at the front and then I'm gonna have the big flowers on the side let's say that all of my flowers are all pretty much gonna be the same that I was gonna follow the same pattern a rose a daisy a rose a daisy and a rose if I was gonna follow that pattern all along then I don't have to find a center all I had to do is just tell myself okay three inches here is gonna be you know overlapping this other three inches like that so then all I had to do was start at this end and whatever flower was going to be close to my ribbon, I would start with that one, then the next one, and so forth. Until I got all the way around to the other end, again, leaving those three inches free. And that would be the easiest way to actually do this. Okay, we left, we left off here with these. So let's keep adding, but I'm going to cut up some more tape. Okay, so another thing to note is to make sure that you wrap all the way the end of that, whatever that little stem you put on here, make sure you wrap it all the way to the end. If you run out of tape, grab another piece, or if the stem is too long, go ahead and just trim it off. Okay, so now the next one is a leaf. Alright, so I put what all the flowers that I'm going to put at the front of my crown and I can spread it out like that and as you can see they kind of bunch up together which is kind of what I want. <laughs> now I'm going to go ahead and compare this to the front of my head so that I can see if, if I'm starting this a little too soon on the sides or if I need to go ahead and add a little bit more daisies. Okay, so another thing you want to do is you're going to want, when you're, you're done adding all your little flowers, is you want to direct all your flowers to come upward. Because this is what's going to be the bottom of the crown, and this will be the top. So you want all your little flowers shooting upward. Okay, let's continue on with our roses on this side. I decided that, you know, this was okay enough, and then I'm going to have roses right here. Uh, so this is going to kind of start off at, like, if I was to part my hair on my right side, this is where the rose is going to start, or if I parted my hair on the left side, this is where the other, that's the, where the position compared to my head, so you can get an idea of what I'm doing. But you'll see it once I have it finished and I have it on my head. Okay, so I'm going to continue with a rose, but I'm also going to bend this upward a little bit here, okay? I'm going to bend that little stick, the stem. You can see that? I bent it. 
so that I can rest that on there now. And don't worry about it right now. If it twists on you while you're taping it, you can always twist it back into position. Okay, I think I'm going to need another little piece of tape because I had to wrap it up here really well because I felt it was a little too... Now, it was like it was a little heavy. The rose is a little bit heavier than the other stem. So I want to make sure it sticks on. Okay, so now I can cut that off. And then I'm going to continue with a daisy, a rose, a daisy. The same thing on the other side. Okay? Okay, so I've completed this side of my crown. This is going to be the side here. So now I want to do the same on this other side as I said I was going to do. I didn't put this very last leaf on yet because I want to see where my little bows and such are going to go here. So I'm going to wait on this one for the last. Now I didn't put any leaves with the daisies here, you know, this, these little stems between the roses because I felt like the roses were already really big and they already had their own leaves there so I didn't think I needed that. But that's what that looks like. Of course, once we make it into a circle, and like I said, if anything looks like, oh, there's some little bare spots, I can just glue some leaves or I can glue some more of these little flowers in, into it. Okay, so let me go ahead and continue on this side. And I feel like the stem's a little too long, so I'm just going to trim it. Okay, so now I'm adding the very last um, daisy on this other side. Well, at least the last one that I know of for now. I don't know if I'll add any more, but we're going to go ahead and take that one up. There were some cases where I grabbed an extra piece of tape and taped uh, some bits a little bit more in some cases where the tape was a little too long. So here's a leftover leaf that would go on this other end and then the one that on this other end that would finish it off. Okay, but this is what it looks like if I open it up. And as you can see, it's really nice and, and tight. And this is the same idea you would use to create a floral garland. Of course, you would just make it a lot longer or you could just make a short one like this, put it on a, on a short little shelf. But of course, you probably just want to keep you know, the same pattern, don't worry about the very front. Okay, this little crown, now I can now uh, shape it back into a circle. And then I'm gonna bring these two ends together and overlap the three inches and then wire those ends onto each other, like so. And that'll tell me how much I have here in the back and what I need to cover and of course I have these leaves that will still go on here and I'm going to put some bows with that uh, ribbon. I'm going to do just like a little uh, multi-looped bow and have some ribbon hanging off and if I need to I will add some more little daisy stems. I do have more over here on the side. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the little ribbon uh, looped bows. Okay, so all I'm going to do is just take some of this and decide, well I want about, you know, this long a tail. Let me measure it. It's about 11 10 inches long probably gonna I'm gonna go ahead and go with the the 11 inch because then I'm gonna trim the ends to look nice so I'm just gonna grab both ribbons together and then just pinch and twist and create a loop and I'm gonna make this loop to be about you know the size of the rose so just kind of compare it like that then you know it'll stick out about the size of the rose Okay, and then we're going to make another twist, make another loop, 
and then you can just compare them and then twist and loop and let's see how many we can get out of this so far I'm making four loops but remember they are double so I'm actually ending up with eight you could do these separately if you can't you know if you can't uh, maneuver this on your own using the two ribbons at the same time they do each bow separately or if you just have one ribbon that you're working with then don't worry about it make as many loops as you can uh, if you have three yards of ribbon that's nice but I would have maybe maybe five or six even depending on how much ribbon um, and you want you know like hanging off of it as well okay here I've got three loops three loops six that's twelve loops of so I'm going to put it up against here so I can decide if that's enough. I think I'm going to go ahead and stop right there and then I can just trim it and then I'll just uh, cut these ends to look a little bit nicer later. I've got a little fan blowing everything so it's making a little bit of a mess. But I'm going to take another bit here, another tail end, put it on there and then go back over here and cut it right there. Okay, I still have a little bit of this yellow. So I'm going to hold on to that in a minute. I'm going to put a little chenille stem, wrap it around to wire all those loops together nice and tight. I'm, I'm looping, I'm twisting the bow to make sure that it twists towards the bow and tightens everything. Okay. Now I can go ahead and actually I'm going to leave this a little bit open. Should I do that? Let's see. Get this nice and tight and then I can open these up to put them against the wire and tape them down. See, I've got them open here and then just find the center. So I'm going to bring these two daisies together. Here's my center right here. So now I know I can put the center of the bow there. and then tape down this chenille to the wire here and then this chenille to the wire there, okay? Okay, let me tell you something real quick because I'm thinking that we can use these chenilles. Like if, if it's a little hard uh, to tape it down, what you can do is just put the chenille and grab another piece or another piece of wire and wire that down first so it doesn't move on you. There we go, wire down. Get those little ends of the wire. I'm gonna trim this. I don't need that much of a length. And see now it's not now it's not moving on me and I can tape it a little bit better. Now as I was putting the flowers on here and you saw that all I was doing was taping them on. If you feel better about just taking some floral wire, let me grab some floral wire to give you an example. So you could take a piece of this type of wire, you know, so if you don't have chenille stems, if you happen to have this type of floral wire, uh, and you can use that to tie on here. The same thing, when you put the stem down, you could take a piece of wire, wrap it around nice and tight, and then go back and tape it. Okay, as you saw, all I did was tape it. But if you want this to be super secure, if you're doing it for somebody else especially, uh, wire them down first. So I'm just wiring this other end of this chenille stem on here as well. And then I can come back and cover it with some tape. Now I would prefer not to use a chenille stem because you know it's got this little fuzzies, little fabric, and the tape doesn't stick so well to it. So all you gotta do is make sure you overlap that tape really good to make sure that it tapes up. So now I've got some ribbon hanging here in the back. And as you can see, I still got some gap here where I can add more flowers. So this is why I had decided to hold off before I put the last leaf and so on. Because I could actually add more roses, but I'm gonna add more leaves here and another daisy and maybe another leaf. We'll see what fits on here, okay? So just fill it in with whatever you have. If you have plenty of ribbon, make more, more bows, add more this way, more that way, and just have some string now hanging off the center one. So you just have 
ribbons hanging off the back of your head or who's ever had whoever's going to wear this. Now this is a little crown that I'm making just for fun for myself. Uh, but you could do this, I same idea for a wedding or flower girls or even for the bride. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start adding some more little leaves and some more of the daisy stems to my crown. Okay, here you can see where I have already finished putting all of my flowers all the way around and I filled in this area here uh, right before the uh, bow. So it would be fuller back here as well. And I have directed all my flowers upward. You guys, this would also make a great, uh, you know, like a little ring around a candle. So a big old candle wreath. Okay, we can, I can think of so many things that you can do with the same idea. But here you go. That's what it's looking like. And um, in case you're wondering why I mentioned the pliers and you didn't see me using them. I'm sorry that you didn't see me using them. Uh, what I was using them for is to pinch in areas where like the wire ends were maybe sticking out too much. I was just pinching them against the other pieces to make sure that I don't have any uh, little ends sticking out. And then maybe poking myself in the head or whomever I you know, would give this to. Okay. Also, I had a little bit of the yellow left over so I made myself a little multi-loop bow and I tied it with a chenille stem and made like a little a little bit of a twirly bit there I wore the ends where I just kind of pushed them together and then squished them with my little pliers so now on that little bit I can add some glue and then right, right somewhere in the middle here I'm just going to add that just to add a little bit more fluff to that bow also I did cut up uh, because I did have some of these left over and it's not enough for me to use this for something else so I'm taking some of these little uh, daisies like I mentioned at, the, at, at first where I could take these and then hot glue them in the center of some leaves but I did trim off a little bit of this a uh, little bit of stem that it has in the back just leave enough so that none of the pieces slide off and then just add some hot glue and wherever you have some leaves I think I pretty much did them all uh, but wherever you would have some leaves, you would just glue it down, just like I did this one right here. Okay? So just between some leaves, and that adds a little bit more to it. I'm going to go ahead and put some way in here, uh, just to maybe cover some little bare spots. Uh, once you have it on your, on your head, you could try it out. Put it on your head and see how that looks. If you see any little spots that you feel that might, might show through, then cover them up. I'm just going to put a bit more here and there where I feel like you might see through it from the front. Okay. All right. So there we go. There is our little floral crown. All right, everyone. I have completed my festive floral crown. Uh, again, you can use this for any occasion. You can change up the flowers, obviously. Use whatever you like. And of course, if you want to do this a little bit smaller, you can use smaller flowers. I wanted it to be really festive, uh, so this is why I chose these bigger flowers. And here we are. There's the back. Now, again, you could do these with the ribbons hanging off to the side if you want to be more festive. And, of course, you could use this uh, idea to create a uh, garland and not close it together. You could uh, make it for around some candles, a little wreath around some candles on a table. You could also do the floral crown for a bride, even, and the flower girls if you want to do that. I think this is really pretty. I think it's a nice little project if you want to do a little bit smaller scale, maybe for a child, for a little girl. I think they'd be really happy to have a little floral crown on their heads. All right, everyone, uh, Cinco de Mayo is coming up, so I want to wish everyone a happy, safe Cinco de Mayo and keep being safe, as we have been told at this time of this 2020. All right, everyone, I'm going to give myself a big old thumbs up and I hope that you too will give your, give me a big old thumbs up. And yeah, give yourselves a big old thumbs up, especially to everyone who's been subscribing. Thank you very much. And if you haven't already done so, please hit the subscription button. And after that, hit the notification bell so that you can be notified of when I put up my videos, which is twice a week. Also, please leave a nice comment down below. Let me know what you think of this crown. Are you going to be making something similar? What would you do different? Let me know. I like your ideas.
and let's all share them. And as always, uh, make sure you share on your social medias and enjoy.